a surprise guest, someone who last minute said he would be willing to join the show, and we really appreciate it. Uh, they have a big show this week, uh, July 8th, airs on Fight TV. It is MLW Never Say Never, and we are joined right now by MLW owner, Court Power. Court, how you doing? And thank you for joining the show. Hey, guys. Good morning. That was some sweet saxophone music we had going on there. Oh, we have possibly the worst intro music in, that, in wrestling podcast history. <laughs> what are you saying? First of all, my close friend, Tim, former host with one of my other shows, he made that theme, okay? And he did a adequate job, okay? <laughs> adequate, yes. Court, how are you doing the, this morning on Tuesday or on Monday? Jeez, I don't even know what day it is. And how are you feeling as MLW heads to Fight Plus with Never Say Never this uh, on July 8th? No, we're pumped. It's a weird week to have fight week when you have the 4th of July in the middle of it and everyone's off and we're like running production meetings and stuff and doing all of our usual pre-show logistics, putting out fires and all that stuff. But, but we're real pumped, man. This is our first live show, live special since 2019. So it's been a long time. The world's changed. Wrestling's changed a lot. And so we're pumped to be able to gl- so deliver a show. Our last one was priced at like $20, $25. This one is going to be just seven ninety nine is part of Fight Plus and their whole subscription package, so we're, we're we're ready for it. So actually, I'm glad that we got right into uh, the the topic of production and doing something different. Um, yeah. MLW's changed clearly. I mean, not just from when you started in in the early two thousands, but now in 2018 when you all relaunched and everything, uh, and then past the pandemic. What have you learned in the production realm of MLW since? the early days, and also what kind of influences your own philosophies on those changes? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the biggest change is technology. And when we started this, we started it in 02 in uh, Westchester, New York, in the same basement that started ECW's production, did all ECW's production. There's still uh, VHS tapes, um, great Sasuke with Paul Heyman's notes, little notes on it, sitting in the background in 2002 in Charlie's basement. And so we, we adapted that ECW kind of bootstrap and use some elbow grease and electrical tape to, to get your production up and running. And that crew taught me everything. Joey Styles, all those guys taught me all I knew about production up to that point before going on to do stuff with WWE and, and elsewhere. Uh, and just seeing the evolution, you go from uh, 2018, we were using TV trucks uh, for MLW production and you have generators and all this overhead from it. And then you see the evolution of technology and how you can now have these media villages and a bunch of laptops and you're working at the same level. Actually, we think it's better production quality than what we had in 2018, 2019. Uh, and it's, so you're, you're, you're able to do a lot more with that. You have a lot more, uh, in the budget you also have to, to allocate to other things and you also have the freedom to do more production than than we did years ago so it's been all positive just be i think what this would have to do the 2019 version of what we're doing this weekend would have cost so much more in that old model versus how technology sped up and allowed us to do a lot more with the new version than we could do in 2019. When it comes to the deal with with Fight Plus, we know the live specials are going to be on there. Has there been mm-hmm. any talks of d- putting the the weekly stuff on there or the archives on there? The weekly stuff Thursdays you can watch a simulcast and get us on YouTube Fight Plus, and you can watch the archives also. Uh, you can get MLW Fusion every Thursday now on Fight Plus, so that's locked in too. You can see it that way. You can see some of our big special events. You see our 2019 Super Fight Show. Uh, old opera cups. It's all on there now. You can just binge all day on MLW. I asked the same question to Shane Hawk from IWS in Montreal. Uh, they also made the jump to Fight Plus recently. Uh, I, I asked him, why now? What made MLW, what made Court Bauer decide that Fight Plus was the right home for MLW? We even had, I mean, Mike Weber and, and, and uh, on our side have had conversations for geez, I think we're joking, five, six years about doing something big. It just, you know, just the stars didn't align for it. And then finally we had the right conversation at the right time this spring and it just, it just locked and made sense for both sides to do it. So we did it, but we've been very close over the years of doing stuff with fight. I, I first worked with Mike when we were both at ring of honor, 2013, 2014, something like that. So we've known each other a long time. Is there any update on MLW Underground and the return potentially of that for a second season? We're in talks. I can't say any more, but we're in talks. 
Oh, a car. Break some news here. I Let's know. get some breaking hey, news. When I can, I will. But, you know, it, it's it's always something like that where, you know, until it's a, a done deal, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to tease anything. It's just, you know, it's the process. Uh, talk, talk to me a little bit about the, the MLW Open Draft. It is returning at uh, MLW Never Say Never. And we had we had the first one, I believe it was about a year or so ago, uh, with the Open Draft. You know, explain to fans who might not be aware of what this is, exactly what the Open Draft is. Yeah, so we, we started that in 21 when we came back after an extended period where we were doing empty arena matches during the pandemic. And the whole world had changed and we wanted to freshen up our roster and we started to think about how we could we do that, make that interesting as a prelude to the start of the new season and, and 21 in front of fans. And so the open draft was started and we drafted guys like Alex King was a top draft pick at the time we had EJ Naduka, Davey Richards and a bunch of other guys. So that was a way of just, you know, getting that roster big and, and doing it fast and in a different, you know, fun way from promoting perspective. And this year, you know, it's, we, we haven't done it. We didn't do it 22. And then Alex Kane actually brought up, she's like, you're going to do a draft this year. I was like, you know, that's actually not a bad idea because we're going to, we're looking to bring in a lot of new talent. And so this is a good way to kind of bridge the summer into the fall and do an open draft. So uh, right now we have kind of it mapped out through August, uh, but we're in talks with a few guys that might extend women that might extend that draft into, you know, deeper into late summer into maybe the fall. So it's, it's a fun process to go through. And we don't know right now when it's going to end, but we do know the first two, uh, rounds will take place live on fight this uh, Saturday at Never Say Never. I feel like every couple of years you're asked the question uh, about being the wrestler whisperer. And, uh, and <laughs> I don't know if the word wrestler whisperer. I think it's another word before that. But hey, all right. <laughs> well, I, I asked because I did an interview with, with our own Sean Ross Sapp a couple of years ago, and, and he asked you about that. I, I kind of I, I just want to follow up. In 2023, do you still perceive yourself as having a reputation akin to that? Or is it more just like you're, you're more focused on the quality of your talent coming to MLW? Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's a lot to, to kind of, in terms of bandwidth, to, to have that responsibility to kind of hold someone's hand that's a little bit more sensitive to things, maybe a little bit more volatile, whatever those things are that you're trying to, to decode and help them feel good about the process to get the most out of them and have them have the most success. You know, it's, it takes a lot of time. Day of a show, you know, sometimes all of a sudden they want everything that they liked, they decide we never had that discussion. We now got to do a whole different discussion. Like, oh my gosh, we have a show today. You have amnesia. What's happening? Uh, so, you know, it, it does kind of become a process that you kind of don't want on every show. And we're really, right now, I think this locker room, I can't say that I'm using any of those special powers because they're so special. I don't need to, but it's been great to, listen, you know, the chemistry is great in the locker room. You know, when you have some of those, those guys, you definitely can see the, the the chemistry, the feng shui of a locker room is a little funky sometimes. And that, that's just, that's true at every company at some point and how it escalates depends on the situations they're going through at the time. But right now it's so smooth and it's like, man, I, I didn't realize that, you know, I don't think I've ever had a locker room where I didn't have to do that. Uh, so it's, it's been great. Um, but you never say never, but the right opportunity, the right guy where it makes sense for us to use and you'd be considered maybe a problem child, and, you know, we certainly would explore it. I, 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 I'm a big believer in second chances. I myself have gotten maybe more than two chances, three chances, four chances in this business. So uh, it'd be hypocritical for me to, to, to decline someone else's chance. Um, you know, as long as they're, you know, they haven't done anything deplorable. I got to ask about this story that kind of came out. Uh, I think it was the end of last week, this weekend, a Wisconsin based nonprofit, Jake's Network of Hope, uh, accusing Jacob Fatu of kind of taking money and then ghosting. Have you talked to Jacob about this? Any comment on these, uh, these accusations? Yeah, I mean, what I can say is that we're, we're watching it very carefully. We take it very seriously. Uh, Fatu books himself on on third party shows we have no involvement with that but it's something we've we've had meetings on and we've, we 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 are watching carefully and we're continuing to monitor it and learn more about it i appreciate you commenting on that yeah and, and you know I, we work with charities uh, privately and, you know not for like oh you know isn't that great he does that but like i think a lot of us probably work with charities so when you see something like that you know how does it make you feel uh so that's something that you know we're, we're genuinely watching one of the ways that I found MLW was actually through the podcast network back in the day. And uh, there was there was a show that I loved more than anything. 
and that was the VIP lounge with MVP and Alex Greenfield. <laughs> I love Greeny. I think he's still with you guys, if I'm not mistaken. I literally was just talking to him five minutes before I got. I was like, I got to go. I'm doing this show, and he was like, All right, well, I'll talk to you in a few. And I'm like, Okay, we'll talk later. He's your other right hand man. I know MSL is also very much involved in the in the process, and I'm sure there are others. Um, can we can we talk about Greeny for a second? Because I feel he'll maybe, love it. <laughs> maybe it's personal, maybe because we're both Jews that I just appreciate it. Uh, can we just talk about his his involvement in MLW? Because clearly it has a, a major effect on how things are ran there. Yeah, I, I am. I got to meet Alex in 2005 in WWE. Uh, it was like a re rotating door of, of writers from Hollywood coming through. Um, some with big fat deals, some didn't. Some were fans, some weren't. He was a lapsed fan. He grew up on Mid South Wrestling. He grew up on Georgia Wrestling. Uh, didn't watch really after 1990 for a long time. And he one of the first things he said to me is, "Who's the Blue Meanie?" I was like, "Oh, one of these guys again." And I remember sitting there thinking, should I just like blow this guy off? And there's going to be another guy coming through or do I help this guy? And I was like, ah, you know what? Just help. Do the right thing. <laughs> Everything else here tells you to do the other thing. So do the right thing. Uh, and then we, we became like best of friends over the years. And uh, uh, I think we got ourselves through our tours of duty there. And uh, I would bring him on for projects. He'd bring me on for projects, non-wrestling stuff. And it was just a, a great relationship. Friendship was born out of that, that we like talk daily. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a big part of the fabric of the company in terms of production, in terms of you know, as we branch out now and have a booking team, you know, he has a different perspective than someone that may have spent their whole life watching wrestling. He sees it through a different perspective. And I think having that balance where everyone has different backgrounds and their involvement in wrestling is important. And, you know, he, he was a head writer on SmackDown. He has a lot of, uh, a lot of unique qualities and he's been a winner. And so you want that kind of guy, a part of your team. So he's, he, he, Green's a great guy and uh, a loud voice backstage and, and we enjoy him. I ask about the, the growth of Alex Kane. Um, you know, the, the scoopster Sean Ross Sapp put out at the end of last year that MLW was high on Alex Kane. And now we're about to see Alex Kane challenge uh, Hammerstone, for the championship, what do you, what what can you say about just the overall growth of Alex Kane from where he started with you guys to nowadays to now? You know, big title match this weekend. You know, I'm so proud of him. He's um, it, it, it's to to ascend like he has and have that constant upward uh, trajectory is, is is impressive. A lot of guys stutter, they 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 slow down, they take veer off, uh, their head blows up, all these things. He's been such a steady. Progr uh, progress of you know being in the open draft and starting out with King Mo and then finding his own voice and becoming a killer on promos uh, and then bell to bell just continuing to grow and add to his arsenal it's like that's all you can ask for uh, and you know you it's fascinating just to kind of see his evolution both in front of the crowd but also behind the scenes and you start to see a lot of the locker room starts to crowd around him and he becomes a locker room leader at a very young age usually it's the old grizzled vets Guys have been around for a long time, but he's got this energy. He's got this thing that you just don't see every day. And he's very special, and I'm, I'm very proud of him. We've uh, seen the the calling make their splash in MLW, Ricky Shane mm -hmm. Page and Akira, and they're flocked by Raven, which mm -hmm. I guess no pun intended there. Uh, talk to me about having Raven in the, in the locker room and kind of the influence that he has uh, with other wrestlers, including Ricky Shane Page and Akira and, uh, yeah, the, the members of the calling. Yeah, I, I, we first I first worked with Raven uh, in MLW in the original MLW, and uh, back then he was here with CM Punk, and he was giving me a lot of advice uh, along with Terry Funk. Uh, he also gave a lot of TV advice. He, he got me hooked on shows I didn't think he would watch. Like he was a big Desperate Housewives fan. Who knew? Uh, <laughs> kills his gimmick. Probably say that now, but um, you know he's he, he he's really good at um, just giving guys perspective. You know, and, you know, in the, he's kind of a calm in the storm at this point in his career. And so there'll be moments where he just takes care and says, it's all good. Just gives them context, gives them perspective, and all of a sudden reset them and they're ready to go. Uh, he's, he's a great guy to have. He's, he's got a great mind for the business. Uh, he's gotten over everywhere he's gone. And I think that's one of the biggest things in wrestling is the art of getting over and making sure talent understands. It's like, you can have all these cute things or, or have a great match, but does it get over? Is your personality getting over? Are you connecting? Are you drawing money? That's an important quality, and he definitely emphasizes that. 
Joel mentioned the uh, wrestler whisperer thing earlier. I'm going to circle back and piggyback off that here for a second because Mance Warner was a guy who was a part of MLW uh, ahead of the pandemic and then got his, got his release. That was a kind of a public thing and then returned. How did that come about besides just, we, we offered beer to each other. <laughs> you know, it's uh, I think, I think there is something also to the, the, the kind of like, can you repair relationship? Do you, do both parties have the balls to do it? And can you get there? And and that's a generalization, not pertaining to exactly to man's, but it's like, it's always something in wrestling. You like, Oh my God, that person just showed up there. I thought there was heat or whatever. You know, there's that, and that can be intoxicating. Oh, the allure of doing something that people don't think is going to happen. But with man, it's something like, man, we always love, he was, he's just made for TV. He's such a great promo. Uh, he knows how to get himself over. He's such a distinct character and how he works is so different than anything else on the card. And so we look at the battle riot last year and we had had kind of talks between there was a, a certain middleman in, in Alabama that was facilitating talks, you know, to try to repair the relationship. And, and that had been happening since kind of it, it breaking down. And over time, uh, you know, the right moment hit and we got on the phone and it was just a very quick call, Mance and myself, like a week before the riot, maybe the week of the riot. I'm like, dude, you want to come? You doing anything this Thursday? Come to New York. And he's like, hell yeah. Here's some more dates. Hell yeah. And here we go. And all of a sudden, then the second gear crew showing up and man, I just wrote a bunch of TV and Mance is the spine for it along with the second gear crew because dudes are super entertaining. And little did I know, you add a little micromanage into the mix. You got all types of weirdness going on. <laughs> Uh, back in uh, in April, uh, we found out that Enzo, who had been working with MLW, had uh, parted ways. There was a lot of uh, back and forth, and and you know, I, I guess we'll call it he said, she said. Uh, do you want to comment on on anything that uh, that was said or the experience working with Enzo, anything like that? Uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed working with Enzo. I really did. I I think he had a lot he was willing and excited to contribute to. And we had a really good run with him. Um, and then he hit a bump in the road and sometimes you reach an impasse and that's where we were at. It, he had a, he had a position. He wasn't willing to seemingly budge on it. I was in a position where I couldn't. Um, we, I, I tried to wrap things up privately. Then he went on Twitter and so released several videos and we just like, that's, that's where it ended. Um, you know, I, I think he's misunderstood in a lot of ways. I think he's uh, very passionate about the business. I think a lot of people probably don't realize the guy loves the business. Um, but, you know, also time, there's a point in time where you got to take a break and that's, that's where it landed with us. You know, I, I like when things, when someone can just, I think the best thing for, for, for everyone is when someone can leave super hot with a lot of momentum, with, with raving reviews, like MJF, great example. That guy on his last day in MLW, I think wrestled like four matches or something, including an empty arena match before the empty arena matches were exhausted with, with Mance Warner. That guy left with his stock at an all time high and with rave reviews. And then it's basically, it's like, it's like your Yelp review, right? Oh, everyone's going to want to go and check that out. But if you leave somewhere and it's like, mm, it's a little funky, what's the next potential promoter going to say about that? And so, you know, my advice to in general is just like, you know, try to leave and, and, and leave a place in a better place and, and leave with all that momentum you can. And, and if you do, I think everyone's going to want to work with you and you're going to, everyone's going to want a piece of that. If you don't, it's going to be a little, it's going to be a harder road. And look, that I certainly made that mistake myself plenty of times throughout my career. So be hypocritical. I say, I didn't, I didn't learn. Hopefully I learned from my lesson, but I certainly see it differently now. The show is MLW, never say never. I don't keep it too much longer, Court, so I'm going to do a hard sell, and then I'm going to let you do a hard sell as well. It is MLW, never say never, July 8th, airs on Fight Plus, uh, headlined by the MLW World Heavyweight Championship match between the long-reigning champion Alex Hammerstone against Alex Kane, and I believe Alex Hammerstone will be joining us on Wednesday. Uh, so he will be on the show on Wednesday, MLW World Heavyweight Champion Alex Hammerstone. We have the MLW World Tag Team Championship match. Fans bring the weapons, Samoan SWAT team, against the calling the mlw world featherweight championship match against the women's featherweight championship match apologies against the wxw world women's championship 
Delmi XO against Ava Everett. I believe I can also say this. Delmi XO will be joining us on Friday's show. Uh, we have Timothy Thatcher against Tracy Williams. We have Becca singing. We have a country whipping match between Mance Warner and Sam Adonis. We have the MLW Open Draft starting. Again, it is MLW Never Say Never. It is live on Fight Plus july 8th it's in philadelphia it's at the 2300 arena you can go to mlw2300.com to get some tickets you can you can sign up subscribe to fight plus to watch the show live court anything else you want to add man you killed him jeremy what's your rate <laughs> so i'm going to bring you in to do my control centers i mean look four years in the making uh hammerstone has dominated major league wrestling he won the national title in may of 2019 he has not lost in four years. And then he went and acquired another title from Fat Two in the World Heavyweight title. This dude has been unstoppable. 16 title defenses, four years. No one has been able to stop him. I mean, you look at the list, it's a who's who from Mexico to Japan to to guys like Fat Two to Davy Richards. All those guys couldn't do it. Will that man be Alex Kane? Or will uh Kane be number 17? Maybe Kane sends hammer on vacation, Suplex Island this summer. You never know. You gotta watch. Fight Plus, never say never, this Saturday night. And just go and binge MLW. Catch up on MLW on Fight Plus. They have a great app. You can get on Roku, get on Samsung, get on everything. Seven ninety nine a month gets you. MLW gets so much stuff. You can just binge on wrestling all 24-7, 365 with that thing. Seven ninety nine a month. There you go. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us here at the top of the show court. We appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your day. Good luck with MLW. Never say never this weekend. We will be tuning in for sure. We'll have plenty of coverage on it on Fightful this weekend. Again, we've got Hammerstone on Wednesday. We've got Tell Me Expo on Friday. Big week of MLW coverage here on In the Weeds as well. See it on Philadelphia, 2300 Arena, MLW2300.com. Get your tickets. Watch on Fight Plus. Thank you, Court. Thank you, Court. Thank you. Appreciate it.